Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara, and today these two stinkers are wishing someone a happy birthday, and we're using Scent with Love and the Scent with Love add-on, Scootin' By, Puffs of Smoke, and the Little Party Images, The Sentiment from Year 7, and Harold's ABCs, and the One Cloud from Yay Kites, the Outside In Stitched Rectangles, the Flippy Flappy Interactive Die, Grassy Stencil and Cloudy Stencil, and the Simple Stripes Diagonal. Let's start by stamping out the images. I'm finding the skunks that I want to use. So one from the Scent with Love, and then the one from Scent with Love add-on, plus a little cupcake. And then from Scootin' By, I found the little puffs of smoke and some birthday themed images, and I've put those on there, and I'm inking it up with Jet Black ink, which is Copic friendly, and I'm using Copics today. And I actually stamped that a few times, but I just showed you the one. Clean off those stamps, and then I stamped out that cloud and also a couple more puffs of smoke and a hat. Now with Harold's ABCs, I put together the word blast, and added an exclamation point. And now it's time to color. So I'm finding the white sections of my skunks and those white sections are very white, <laughs> very white. But I am putting down a little shadow there mainly because I wanna come back over that with a white gel pen and that will help the white gel pen show up a little bit more if I have that underneath. And now I'm finding the shadows of the skunk body, and I'm using a C8. Now my uh, nib was getting a little drippy there, so I took off the other cap, and that equalizes out that pressure, and so it wouldn't drip, which is always fun to find before, <laughs> before it drips. So that's why both caps are off there to the side. But you can see I'm just finding the areas that are going to be darkest and typically I map out those areas first with a lighter color but with these skunks I mean they're just black so I don't really feel like I could mess this up too much by coming in with my darkest color. Uh, I do come in with a 100 which is darker than that C8 but for the most part that's my darkest color. Now I'm blending that out with the C6 and I will blend it out just a little bit more after that with the C4. The skunk sets have a Valentine theme to them, but I wanted to show how they're easily moved into the birthday theme, or um, I did another one where it just said that stinks, so anything that might be uh, not fun, like being in the hospital, something like that. So their skunks are pretty versatile. I, I never really thought about it much, but uh, I think that they, they hold their own in the stamp images for helping convey a message on a card. Well, here we are now with that 100, just going into those darkest areas and putting in just a small amount and blending it back out with the C8, just a small amount. And then I'm just using that C4 to finish it up there. All right, now that we have the skunks all taken care of, I can come in with that white gel pen. And this is adding kind of that uh, texture of fur to the white areas. You know, I almost think that it'd be fun to get a black gel pen and maybe do the same to their black fur. Hmm. Well, that's an idea. Uh, and now I'm using the R20 to go in the ears and noses. And I come back later with a little darker red color too, but now it's time to start on that stink. So I'm using a YG01 and giving it like that acid green color and also a YG03 coming in and emphasizing the puff of that blast. And then with a YG93, kind of an olive color coming in and really giving it that 
oh, I don't know, Oscar the Grouch kind of color, that gross looking, <laughs> looking color. Because, oh, if you have not smelled a skunk, if there are not skunks in your part of the world, oh boy, you're not missing out. <laughs> you're just not. Uh, using a white gel pen to give it a little shine there, and I'll use that same shine white gel on the balloons and I used it on the cupcake and I'm going to even lighten up see that hat that's uh, red with blue well I felt like the blue was looking a little too dark so it didn't show up very well so I'm putting some white gel in there and then just kind of rubbing it off and it lightened up the blue so that's, that's how I took care of that problem. Putting a few more polka dots on there and a little shine on the gift. And here I come back in with that red. I mean, it's the only bright color on them. So I thought I'd emphasize that a little bit more. Blending that back in with that R20. And now I can cut them all out using the coordinating dies. I'll take these to my die cutting machine and I will put a little bit of a post-it note tape on each one of these dies first so that they stay put. One thing that's great about the Scent with Love stamp sets is they have this wafting type of wavy look to the stink parts, but for this one I really wanted that puff of blast, that, that kind of massive cloud of foul odor. Well, onto the background, I'm ink blending using the grassy stencil and some Twisted Citron Distress Ink. There are grid lines on this stencil, so I can see exactly where those lines are. And I used an outside in stitch rectangle for this little scene, so it worked perfectly to line up those grid lines with my background panel. And now, as I ink up the sky, I didn't have to think at all about how am I going to match up these blades of grass. They just fit right right over where I had them. So now with the cloudy stencil, I'm using some tumbled glass to create the sky. I don't want this to be too dark because my sentiment is going to be up there in the sky. And I want it very readable. And so a final little bit of clouds there and then I decided the my grass was looking a little too anemic wanted to brighten that up a little bit so out again with that mowed lawn but then coming in with some crushed olive and this kind of brought in that brownish yellow green that was in that YG 93 and then I put this twisted citron and the mowed lawn over that and now I feel like I have some nice bright grass for the skunks to stand on. Now this panel is a little too small for the flippy flappy. I need one that is five by three and three quarters and I knew I was going to have a nice border uh, but I wasn't sure if it should be blue or red but then I remembered the simple stripes and I brought out the diagonal one and now I have them both. So one of the tricks that I have found with the st simple stripes is to cut both pieces at the same time because now I can just pull off every other stripe of the blue and the red one did not cut all the way through which gave me a base but also the grooves so that I know where to line up those stripes. Made it just very simple to add two colors together. So now I'm just gluing down those blue stripes to the red background. And when I flip it over, you can see that it didn't cut all the way through. Now you might need to work on adjusting your die cut machine so that it doesn't cut all the way through the second piece, but that's how I was able to do that. Now just adding that panel onto my background border kind of looks like my dad's tie <laughs> now that I look at it. Yeah, it looks like a tie I probably got for my dad in the 80s. Mm. Anyway, uh, time for that sentiment. Now the year seven, the pinata one says, hope your birthday is a smash, which is great for the pinata, but now it works well for our, for our skunks. And it says blast. 
I decided I wanted to darken up that word blast a little bit. Got it kind of uh, lightened up, I think, when I colored over it. Now, the men in my family, uh, they're, they're a tough crowd when it comes to birthday cards. Uh, their refined taste requires a type of humor that reverts them back to that little boy that snickers when someone says the word, but. <laughs> I think this card will meet the criteria, and I'm I'm excited to give it to one. I mean, that's really kind of sad. <laughs> I'm excited to give a skunk spraying card, but I am. I'm. <laughs> it's always good to read your audience. Well, all right. So now I'm just gluing on some of the pieces, and I will also use tape runner. A combination of both to adhere everything to this panel except for the big cloud that is going to go on the flippy flappy so this card will say hope your birthday is a and then they have to pull the tab and then the blast comes out so here are the pieces I'm using from the flippy flappy there's a piece of acetate a little tab a little white tab which is a cover-up uh, the pull tab, and then a piece of cardstock that is five inches by three and three quarter inches. The cloud has to be in enough that I can put some foam adhesive on the edges. So I'm going to line up the arrow of the main die. And this is the one that creates the movement. Line that up and I'll cut that out with my die cut machine. It will add some score lines and also some cuts. And I want to find the front and the back. So I know that's the front. So here is the back. The pull tab has a nice stitched edge around the front. So I can tell the difference between the front and the back. And I want both backs facing me when I put them together. But first, I want to take all those score lines and with my bone folder, get a nice crease on each one, and I will do it both ways so that this is very flexible, like an accordion. That's what's gonna help this mechanism move smoothly, have some smooth moves. <laughs> all right, so flipping it over and creasing all those fold lines the other way. And let's see if we get a nice, accordion type flexibility at the end. Let's see, whoa, there it, is. there it is. I don't know why I always have to do that, but that's how I decide if it's flexible enough. All right, I'm making sure that the backs are facing me and I'll feed that folded piece through the slot on the tab up to the first fold. I'll add some double-sided tape to the part that's showing, fold that over onto the tab. And I want to make sure that we're all lined up straight. So I kind of use my grid mat to help with that. I can flip it over to the front now and test it out. Looks like it's working well. And now I can put on that decorative arrow piece at the top of the tab. And that shows the recipient what to do with the card. I've got some foam adhesive and I'm doubling it up because this mechanism works best if it has a little room to move it, it kind of buckles and that's how it moves so I've got a double layer of foam adhesive and I'm putting it just on the edges of the back side of this panel that's why it's nice to write back and front on this panel so that I don't get mixed up now I can put some adhesive on the front of the panel everywhere except for the mechanism and then I can add my decorative panel, our skunks, on top of that. And now to add the piece that's going to flip out. So I opened up the tab all the way so I could put my acetate on that one fold that you see from the mechanism. I want to add some double-sided tape, something very strong, onto the fold. And then I can place my acetate on top of that. Now there's a decorative piece that helps hide that acetate. And I'm going to add a piece of double-sided tape to that as well. And that will sandwich that piece of acetate between the decorative piece and the fold, and it'll keep it nice and secure. 
Now I can add my Cloud Blast to that acetate, making sure it's positioned where I want it on my card when it opens, and also that it's not going to interfere with the foam tape in the back. And look, it's just right up against that, but it is not going to be a problem. So I can cut the rest of that acetate off. I only need enough to get that flap piece to come out. I'm looking at it on my white card base and decide that I would like a little more color in there. So I cut out another outside in stitched rectangle. This is the largest one in cilantro cardstock. And I think that works well with the grass and the blast. And then the other colors, that red was the chili pepper and the blue is Blue Jay cardstock from Lawn Fawn. Both great bright colors especially for a masculine card. Now, knowing the men in my family, the man hands, it's nice to have this die that cuts a little notch so it make it easier to reach that pull tab. So I die cut that out and I can take off the release paper of my foam tape, add that to the center of my card, I pull it up and there's the blast. Now I need to train this to work. So I'm going to move it back and forth a few times before I know that it'll just work easily. But one thing that will help with a flippy flappy is to use a thicker cardstock for that tab portion. Well, I hope you enjoyed the card today and it inspired you to use the flippy flappy to have a blast. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.